Castology. This is Castology, and we're back for another week of listening to, recommending, and reviewing podcasts. That's I, our job. I'm mm. one of your hosts, Ainsley Weber, here with my wonderful co-hosts. It's not me. The wonderful one's Nick. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> well, what Thank is you. your... Today, uh... <laughs> I'm just like not... I'm so... I'm like food coma, not okay. so wonderful. But right. yes, I'm Liz Best and... and I'm fucked by food, Nick Bleeker. All right. Wow, that is... A podcast title. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is too. Oh, shit. I'll write it down. Well, yep. we need to stop pitching and start yeah, sorry. recommending. Bitching. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm going to bitch about any of this podcast this week. No, not at all. Okay. You're not? No. All right. Well, good. Mm. So let's just, Maybe I'm being sarcastic. You let's don't just, know. Let's just jump in straight into it. So we have a theme this week. We do have a theme. The theme is uh, how-to podcasts. And look, I feel like the podcasts that we selected say a lot about ourselves. <laughs> And I will come back around to that at the end, but once we've introduced all of our podcasts, but I, I was looking at the list and I was just like, the way at which we've come at this says a lot about who we are as people. Interesting. <laughs> so, to, so to kick yeah. that off. Yeah, I'm going to throw to you, Liz. <laughs> My podcast is called How to Fail with Elizabeth Day. Um, so rather than doing like a, a how to, like that was something physical, I like to how to your brain um, and learning through failing is how I do life. So, <laughs> so Elizabeth Day, it's kind of like a, she interviews people to explore self-improvement through her interviewees' worst moments. So it's all about finding lessons in the challenges that life throws you. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like you can look at career development, you can look at self-help, you can look at emotional regulation. It depends on who comes on the podcast. There have been a lot of famous people who I completely forgot to take note of because I'm an asshole. Um, <laughs> I didn't do my work this week. Uh, I did see I did see one of them with Stanley Tucci, which I intend to listen to. Yes. And there was another one that was a really famous uh, like kids book author that I can't remember. Oh, Jacqueline Allen. Jacqueline Allen. Oh. Um, and I listened to that one and really enjoyed it as well. Um, and yeah, so it's 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 not focused on like self aggrandizement or bigging yourself up. It's the lessons that we learn through humility, which I find very useful in how to rewire my brain when I'm feeling like crap about things. Absolutely, it's it's uh, I guess like trying to learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I cool. could be a guest so that they could learn from my <laughs> many many mistakes. Uh, how long are the episodes, and how many are there? There are many. <laughs> so so it's it's a long it's been going yeah. for a really long time, and some of the episodes have been about forty five minutes, but usually most of them are over an hour. Okay, um, so right. But yeah, in a really chatty interview style podcast, obviously in the later episodes we went a bit zoomy because COVID um, so don't judge audio quality when you're doing that but yeah it's been going for ages and it is honestly one of the most recommended self-help I say that in, in quote marks because it's not like a full-on psychological self-help yeah. kind of podcast but it's one of the most recommended podcasts to me when I'm like what what kind of podcast is self-help be so I listened to it and I loved it awesome so well let's uh let's stick with that theme and uh, go to Nick. I actually thought it was a pretty nice segue to mine because my podcast is called uh, How to Build a Happy Life from the yeah. Atlantic. And look, I think it's actually pretty interesting that it the, the, the shows that we've recommended. I mean, for me personally, this one, especially given the last couple of weeks slash months for me have been quite difficult. <clears throat> this one was a really interesting sort of recommendation that swung through via my Pocket Casts app. It was like the... I'm pretty sure like just as a big asterisk here, I'm pretty sure Pocket Casts pays for people to promote their shows to the top, but... To be honest, they've hit you pretty much every single them. time. Like it's it's good shit. Um, but this uh, this particular podcast is hosted by Arthur, Arthur C. Brooks, who is a Harvard professor that explores. He's like a phil philosophical dude who explores like happiness. Um, what else did you see? Fucking biography. So actually, that he had a really good biography. Right. He's just really good at behavioral it's just, it's just cool guy. happiness yeah. and shit. And he actually is a really good speaker. So the purpose of this particular podcast is. It, it's a new one from the, from the Atlantic, and it's about living a happier life through scientific means, but not specifically being like, "Here's the science of like your brain. This is what you need to do." Mm. So no brain, like Zane, this is kind of exciting because science, but also <laughs> not so much science. The thing that so when you say <clears throat> it's kind of like science, he brings on like in experts the, and shit. Is it in the sense <laughs> it's that like science? Yeah, so he's yeah. talking to experts. It's not about Zane what they Dry, learn. but it is science. But it is well, science. It's Atlantic I know, science. Is 
Can you be science without being Zane dry? Social science is not Zane dry. Yeah, no, social science I, is fun. I've brought a lot of social science That's podcasts. True. <laughs> Zane okay, well, dry. this one isn't. <laughs> look, I think the thing that really separated this for me, and look, to be honest, it's actually quite hard to find like how to like how to podcasts that aren't just like how to fix a car and shit. I would recommend Which that. Which I would, you know, niche, like I, I was going to look for ones like that, but then I was like, that's, I'm not interested in doing. I'm interested in being. You just tell me, what the hell? <laughs> um, but I think the thing that for me, it was not exclusively limited to about like having a tea and listening to your favourite music. It was about what goes into those particular practices and about what those practices help with on our kind of journey to building a better life for ourselves, mm. whether it is the small things or whether it is the bigger things. So there's a couple of episodes. It's only it's only been going for a month and a bit now, but there's like obviously how to know when you're lonely, how to be self-aware, how to find the secret to meaningful work, which is an episode I haven't listened to yet, but I'm very excited to listen to because that's where I'm at currently. Mm-hmm. And I feel like listening to this might be a bit of a shock to my system. So Arthur Arthur's delivery here is really really good, and it's an, it's the Atlantic, so they, it's pretty hard to fuck up. From, yeah, from their perspective. So yeah, we'd say that, but we have had major favorite networks of ours very come true. to the table with stuff that is a major fuck up. So very very true. We'll see. Nick. I don't want to throw any stones, but maybe you need to take a break from the Atlantic for a while. <laughs> oh, my, my, look, yes, look, fine. I, yeah, I, need, to, I need to fucking ban myself from be all major. We've, we've all enjoyed the Atlantic podcast <laughs> that you've brought, but but also yeah, you're banned. Stop it. <laughs> Zane. Uh, yeah, so the final one is an actual how to do something podcast. Ours is a how to do something yeah, too, yeah, but it's hell? rewiring it's your brain. It's something practical. It's not right. self-help. Okay. This is more of an actual Fine. practical thing. And it's, it's it's literally called the DIY Musician Podcast. So this is a this is a podcast that is sponsored or produced by CD Baby. Now, CD Baby. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> CD Baby. Oh, wow. okay. yeah. so, so when you say CD Baby. <laughs> yeah, so it's a baby full of seeds. <laughs> right. <laughs> like yeah. legit, like when I first looked this podcast up and I listened, like no spoilers on what I thought, but when they're like CD Baby and I'm like, a CD Baby yeah. is producing this podcast? <laughs> the it's compact disc, CD yeah. Yeah. Baby. You know, back in the day when you would buy CD Baby CD. funnier. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they're a service that basically lets you buy music online um, and lets uh, artists produce their CDs and what have you through their services. So it's a really good idea for them to have this podcast all about what it is to be an independent musician, how to do that, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So some of the things like is like uh, how to create the perfect release plan like yeah. and they're talking to people who have done that people who do that every day um about how to do that and like how to know when you're ready to release something and like how to increase spotify listeners and and things like that so really practical things about the world surrounding mm. music and music production um that honestly i i also struggled to find podcasts that were this kind of thing whereas mm. like a lot of podcasts were like well i do this for a living so i'm gonna have a podcast and just talk to people in the industry i was like no i would like practical actually tips. Practical, practical tips thank you yeah. give me a episode list. specific like yeah. this is what we're gonna talk about today and how yeah. to do it um and this is really good quality audio which is what you would expect um but also really great quality advice um and from experts who do this every day Cool. Yeah. So, so it's called DIY Musician Podcast. From CD Baby. Not from CD Baby. <laughs> um, so what I meant when I meant it, this kind of represents all of us is just like how to fail me, <laughs> like how to build a happier life, cheery old Nick. And Zane's just sitting there in the corner with his fingers in his ears going, la, 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 music. I don't have fingers <laughs> in my ears. Uh, I have headphones, headphones on. on. <laughs> yeah. We're like, how to do this, how to do that. And Zane's like, music, creativity, <laughs> escape. <laughs> I don't want to listen to life. I don't want to <laughs> like real life. <laughs> is not what I'm here yeah. for. Yeah, negativity, positivity, <laughs> and music. <laughs> All right. So those are our recommendations for this week. So uh, I recommended the DIY Musician Podcast, Nick. Uh, I recommended uh, How to Build a Happy Life from the Atlantic. And, and I this. recommended How to Fail but with Elizabeth Day. <laughs> the emphasis on fail. How to fail. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll hear more about these podcasts in a fortnight when we come back to review them. But right now we're going to go back a fortnight and review our spooky it's a Halloween review. Yeah, our spooky uh, podcast recommendations. So I would like to start with uh, just I'm just going to forewarn everyone here. 
I'm going to be a hypocrite on this one. So before we get into why and on how, this I'm one? Be, yeah, on this one, uh, <laughs> on I don't know what you're talking on about. Just this one, okay. <laughs> uh, let's throw straight to Nick. Uh, so my recommendation a fortnight ago, um, also used the same last week, uh, was the Stephen King's Strawberry Spring. That is really hard to say. I kept saying Strawberry Spring because I had the Coldplay song on my mind when I was mm-hmm. recording. Still is on my mind every time I read the fucking title. But anyway, so uh, when this- I was searching for Strawberry Spring. Spotify definitely thought I meant <laughs> Strawberry Swing. Like, yeah, fuck. and I'm pretty Coldplay sure everywhere. when you recommended it, you also said Strawberry Swing. <laughs> yeah, no, I did like three times. Yeah, actually remember it. Anyway, um, this it's based on a Stephen King uh, short story about the return of Spring Heeled Jack, who is a serial killer that is leaving behind a trail of murders, and it is up to a group of teens to solve slash dodge said murders. What did you all think? This has kicked off something in me. Scary. That now... <laughs> I'm now a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, whoops. By the way, <laughs> I'm Spring Hill Jack. Um, no, I've just started going down the rabbit hole of limited series horror podcasts. I really I really dug it. Um, it's not Stephen King's strongest story, um, but the execution of it, um, the when it was set, like it's super evocative um, and, yeah, I loved it. It's my bag. Yeah, I agree. Um, I do think, like, I don't think you needed to adapt a Stephen King mm. to make this. I think you could have easily oh, dude, made something they're new. they're totally trading on his name. The yeah. name Stephen oh, that's King literally is, is, bigger is bigger than, than the title of the actual I, do, I do think that's a Stephen King thing, though, rather than a specifically to this podcast because I... Oh, dude, yeah. yeah. Why am I odd duding? Always, <laughs> yeah. I've been hanging around with my dude, brother too dude. much. Oh, dude. dude. <laughs> oh, dude. Um, um, yeah. It's one of those authors where the name is like twelve times larger yeah. than the actual title of the podcast, and which is fine. I think it's a really, it's really well done. My one critique is that like the atmospheric mu- uh, sound design in this really was a bit overpowering for me. Mm-hmm. I much oh, would yeah. have, really much would have preferred it to be more dialogue or made the dialogue clearer. Um, but again. Is really well done and and it's a limited limited run. Yeah, high recommend. Yeah. Sorry in advance for all the limited run scary <laughs> podcasts that are coming no, up in your feed. Get on that train. Yeah, it tells me how to go four hundred episodes of a show, <laughs> which I love about my niche podcast. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, so that's Stephen King. I I would be I would be very unsurprised if we see more Stephen more, King yes. audio adaptations. Yeah, coming out. I think it's and not even just to Stephen King. I think it'll just be a, like quite a lot of writers that have those short stories set, like the big name writers that haven't yep. had mm. those short stories produced. They'll just basically go, well, if this is a way to produce, make more money, and obviously get the story out, then then yep. they'll find easily find a network. Yep. Like it wouldn't yeah. be an issue at all. Absolutely. Well, let's go on to the. The other audio drama that was recommended with Liz. So I recommended an anthology, a horror anthology for the ears, as it is called. Um, Bad Vibes. Look, it is Q-Code. I know. Like, I got a reprieve (laughs) before I posted this. I got permission. Just letting everyone know before Nick pops a fucking gasket. Um, So it's basically, uh, but I think it's six or eight. I think it's eight by the time it finished episodes yeah. um, where Mr. Boogity, who's ju- who's uh, played by Justin McElroy, um, introduces a, a horror anthological story that's been soundscaped a la Q Code. Some of them actually made me viscerally cringe with the sound effects that they went with. Um, and, yeah, there's one particular episode where someone gets an injury to their like hand or thumb or finger and I've slammed my finger in a car door before and had my nail crushed and it was very triggering um but (laughs) what did we think well I'd like to agree with you on that one so that's the that's the thumb uh the what is it the thumbnail episode that wasn't my favorite episode it 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 made my butthole go like right up into my body (laughs) um I think okay positives for me um, I really like how this is told. The presentation's really, really, really crisp. The stories, for me, I'm not really a big horror guy, right? So, th- like, it needs to be, like, fucking, like, good shit for mm-hmm. me to be at all interested. It's not even because I'm a big scaredy cat. It's just because, like, horror like horror for me, like, at, in this day and age, is just, like, bang, 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 bang. Like, yeah. it's just kind of boring jump scares. This one here, I think the actual presentation for me is what sells it, right? It's really, really good. And I think, for me, the, the balance that I found is that I actually feel like probably not so much because some of it's quite graphic. But it swings quite, like, you could potentially send this to, like, young adults like do you know what I mean like it, it yeah, kind of it's kind felt- of like some of them have gave me a bit of like an R.L. Steiny 
Sonic yes, Foxy kind yes, of Yes, yes, oh, Sonic, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 perfect, yeah. perfect. And that's the vibe that I got. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool because it is like adults could enjoy this, but also like mat- mature aged children would probably be able to grasp what was going on and get I wouldn't something. call them children. Let's okay, say teens. kids or teenagers. Gen Xs, whatever the fuck num- letter they Let's are. Just say, Gen X are old. We, we Which could, ones we Gen? Could just Gen Z. Oh, shit. Uh, but even me. Gen Z are in their 20s. Yeah. Let's what are they ahead. now? What are the people Zoomers. Below? Oh, Zoomers. That's right. Look, anyway, I, I felt that there were, like the show ha- presents a really, really nice balance between that. It could skew like old, but also could skew quite young. What? Oh no! That's the amount the disappointed of fucking face. ads yeah. in this show. Yeah, it's Q code, man. Completely ruined because this show. You can for subscribe me. now. Like Q code yeah. are adding in extra ads than they used to because now they've got their stupid Apple subscription thing to pay to listen to it ad free. Oh, that's right, because you can do subs on Apple Podcasts now. So yeah. they so they have been driving home. Like I've just started listening to another one of their podcasts that I'm really enjoying. But yes, they're driving home the ads to make you subscribe for an ad free listening experience. In their words, so. One example, the hit cardio episode, which is probably loved that great episode. episode, incredible episode. It takes, it gets, you, you, I in three and a half to four minutes, there are at least one, two, three introduction, introduction to, introduction to the show, and then it goes into another ad. And I was like, no, you've introduced the show, get going. And the problem is that it doesn't just. St- stop there it keeps going and i'm like how many fucking ads am i listening to and it just it really ruined it for me because i think it's actually quite a good show and i really did enjoy these stories but my fucking god give it a break not an ad subscribe i don't want to (laughs) i mean actually look to be fair like like these content creators do deserve they do deserve it it. but but it's a bit bigger like i'd prefer to go like to swing smaller do you know what i mean and support the smaller creators that may not get the potential budget and all that I sort mean, of push. I mean, agreed, agreed. Yeah. Anyway, that was my that was literally the biggest gripe that I had with it. Other than that, great show. Yeah, I mean that is that standard Q code, yeah. and that that is what you what you. It what wasn't you when we with. first signed up. It was just ads for Sonos. Yeah, to be fair, <laughs> that we we were on when Q code wasn't Q code. We loved it when they weren't yep. cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> when they weren't cool. <laughs> when they were just a really good content producer, yeah. and yeah. now and now you know they. I'm happy for they, them. I'm happy yeah. for them that they that they have enough commercial success to be able to do it but yes it does take you out of it especially when it's a moody piece and also also it is a a real i I don't want to say sinister but very it's just a real pragmatic approach where they Mm. they're not they're not here for the listener now no um they're definitely here just trading on their good name for people to push through the ads or fork over other money Mm. um which you know that's that's something that every medium form has to as to approach in some way um, I hopefully podcast has not become the, follow the television route. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, but it is on us to make our opinions known as listeners. So, yep. dear Q code, stop. stop, stop, please. <laughs> also, just go back to what you were like a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> stop putting. Yeah. Oh no, that's Wondery, isn't it? Yeah. Wondery, the ones that. Pull oh no, this the this has three. Q-Code this has, it as well. this has three yeah. trailers at the back <laughs> end of it now. <laughs> uh, but what I thought. Was this, I, um, okay, it is a well-known fact that I do not like the McElroy voices. Yes. And I really don't like the McElroy voices. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, I don't, I don't know whether it's just the voice that I think the acting is bad, but almost maybe 50% of the vocal performances in this, I, I had an issue with, like oh. that they, I didn't really like. I thought you'd have um, a McElroy problem, but I didn't think that you'd have another people problem. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, like he's not huge in it. So it's not, yeah. it's not like a constant thing. No, it's just like tales from um, the Crypt Keeper or like, yeah. The, yeah. I did find the, the presentation of like the ooky spooky, really juvenile but again that's very McElroy humor mm. um and and so i assume he helped write it uh in this one in the exact opposite to strawberry spring which is why i wanted to flag that i'm being a hypocrite um the audio production was a little uh underwhelming um in the fact that they they tried to atmospherically produce the vo- just voices where with one voice coming from one direction and one coming from another and 
I found that distracting in this See, one. In the car, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's I where, where I listen to it as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. So yeah. I feel like there needs to be like a, a disclaimer. So did you listen through headphones or just out of loud? Yeah. 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 So I don't know what it is about because I was listening to Bad Vibes. In fact, after our recording sessions, I would spooky listen to it on the drive on mm. the way home. And like having the atmospheric sound like coming from each speaker in the car creeps me out because it feels like somebody is sitting next to me saying yeah. these things. Yeah, and that's and that's that's fair because I assume they are created for surround sound, which would be most cars now. Yeah, but again, I fit into the segment of the audience that doesn't consume in that particular way. I do use headphones because it's Q code, so you're expecting you have it. to. Yeah, you're yeah. expecting the sound quality and the sound um, engineering to be there. Um, yeah, I just found it a little little distracting, little irksome. But again, really great product. Like mm-hmm. this is, there's no reason not to do this. Like it's a, not, not not to listen to this. I do think that this is probably probably the most PG-13 yeah. Yeah. that Q-Code has done. Yeah. yeah. So I, I can definitely see them trying to move into that, that market. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, well, let's go to my recommendation, which was Knife Point Horror. So Knife Point Horror is, again, just a uh, uh, an anthology series uh, by, by one person um, creating, creating horror. So what did you think? So I've got in my notes, I just went so into this. And even though I just said it's so much more than one person just telling stories, even though it's one person just telling yep. stories. Like the way that he's mm. done it, it's not just reading from a script or whatever. Like it's one person performing and telling the stories. I don't know how to explain it other for, than... For me, for me, the vibe was I feel like I'm at a campfire with a bunch of friends and someone's yes. telling me a tale while there's an owl watching me or like a fucking <laughs> weird thing from the forest just like or staring is just down. staring at me, right? Yeah. And it's like pulling like pulling these sort of influences that are around and then putting it into the into the story. Yeah, yeah. I, like that's that's where I was sitting at in terms of I like, intended to only listen so. to like two episodes yeah. and I think the next minute I've just binged it all day. Like this and guy's that's, great. Yeah, that, yeah, he's a great writer, great performer. So great... Soren Narnia is his name. Yes, or at that's least right, the name that he yeah. gives. In so I, I uh, full applause to this. Like the you you can't tell that it's one person and I think mm. that's incredible. I think that is the combination of great writing and a great performance and yes. production from one person. That is what makes this this podcast so uh, magnetic. Yeah, yeah. magnetic is right. The artwork is also completely fucked. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I and I say that not as a it's shit art. It's like when I looked this up, I was like, Zane, what the fuck is? What this? are you getting? I legitimately into? have in my notes knife point horror artwork. Zane, what in the fuck is this? I assume it's some sort of like bat, rat, cockroach creature. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm not into it. (laughs) It's not the greatest. I I think for me, one of the other things that really stood out was I I think the minimalistic production on this Mm -hmm. is what really, really helps it shine. Because when you look at comparatively to our two recommendations, Liz, this is it's so different because it feels quite like intimate almost. it is it's it's definitely intimate campfire like submitted for the midnight society yeah. approval <laughs> yeah. kind of stuff like yeah. it's it's i think it doesn't feel produced no Whereas but it doesn't of, feel underproduced yeah. either yeah. like it's it so feels bizarre. just like i still don't understand how to explain what i meant but my notes literally just said it. it's it's so much more than one person telling stories even though it's one person yeah. telling stories i think yeah this one the production is invisible whereas yeah. the other two it's very the production is very first it's thing, manipulative you know, yeah. the production on the other yeah. two and i i love it don't yeah. get me wrong please lead me down the garden path of a scary story <laughs> but um it's definitely like we're going to do this music to make them feel this and this to make them feel that whereas this just tells the story as it is and it's well written enough yeah. to not need any of the bangs and whistles and whatnot. Awesome. I'm really glad that you enjoyed it because, yeah, it was a, I'm a very, I'm very, I still listen to this one. This was a very fun, um, not just Halloween spooky time yeah. podcast. Do, does Soren, so I'm just looking at the description, they're all creative common stories. Are these stories, so is Soren saying that you can take these stories and use them or are they yeah. s- stories that y- yeah. they've yeah. made? So oh, unreal. He writes them and produces them, but he produces them in so the So if comments. you want to make a play yeah. oh, that's based sick. on one of the stories... Do oh. it and just tag him. Soren, come through. What a win. Yeah. I love that shit. Absolutely. I think we've had that, we had that recently with another show, didn't we? With the creative sort of comments. Stuff. I think it, it was, was this one. This one, but it, it was, was just we one. recorded yeah. We just it recorded So long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore me and we'll move on. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, that's a great thing to point out as well is that like the the exact opposite of Q-Code is like this is, 
this is content this that I've created. Please use. Please just be tag inspired. me. Let me know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, sh- uh, shout out to Soren. Soren well done, yeah. man. This is a winner for sure. Awesome. Well, that has been us for another week. Uh, let's back announce again just what we recommended for our uh, how-to episode. Uh, Liz, it's you recommended the three personalities: how to fail with Elizabeth Day. <laughs> Nick? Uh, How to Build a Happy Life. And I recommended the DIY Musician Podcast. Which personality are you? (laughs) Uh, Let us know in in, uh, the review section on Apple Podcasts uh, when you give us a five-star rating. Mm. uh, Go do that. uh, And or just reach out on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. All those fun things. Um, And if you want to get your podcast or a podcast that you're a big fan of on this show, uh, go to our website, thatsnotcanon.com forward slash castology and there's a form that you can fill out which will make it very simple i will listen to all the podcasts i may or may not mention them and i am here (laughs) no that's not true i do listen to a lot of the podcasts not as many as zane's but i also take his recommendations into consideration when he goes this is a very loose podcast see what you think yeah and i always do see what i think it's about murder or girly things fuck you you like murder and girly things. I do like murder, but I'm so much more than just murder and girly things. But the podcasts that get sent in are usually murder or girly things. I also like boy things. Like And gender rock neutral things. Like uh, kayaking? Sport kayaking isn't... Well, kayaking's a good one, actually. I'm going to look that one up. I, don't like, I like gender neutral stuff as well. Oh no, absolutely. God. Girly things. Set, P.S. Send me podcasts about makeup. <laughs> and other girly things. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Okay. Well, that's been us for this week. Uh, <laughs> I've been saying see you over here with... Liz Best. And... Nick Bleeker. Keep listening to podcasts, everyone. <laughs>